So in the Strategy Labs gang, the whole purpose is to walk through developing a strategy. Obviously, strategy laboratory, right? Where we uh, put our minds together and we come up with ideas, thought processes, theory, logic. We take those things and we talk about how to turn them into a trading system, a trading signal. All right? So when I do these, I tend to use either public domain indicators or some of our proprietary indicators. Today, we want to talk about internal strength. A lot of y'all love that indicator. You like the turning point followed by the black tip. Uh, and so again, it's nice to be able to walk through it. You can take this information and do it one of two ways. So let's just kind of walk through uh, what I do. So number one, the way I always teach is I look at the market and I look for tendencies. And we look at tendencies two different ways. One of those is indicator tendencies. And obviously indicators are based on price, so they're derivatives of price. The other is price tendencies. And these for us typically are pattern oriented. All right. So for years I taught Fibonacci analysis, stuff that we just went through, ABCD patterns and things of that nature. So for example, if I showed you how to come into the market, take the drawing tool right here and say, what was the last swing high prior to the decline to this new structure low? Then draw from here to the swing high that exists here before the market makes this new low. Then ask a simple question, if this leg, which we call the A to B leg, duplicated itself, in other words, the same symmetry was present here and here, then where would this market terminate? Well, that projects down to $100 crude oil as an example. Well, now the challenge is for the individual trader, I've got traders in the room that have got 15 years experience in the markets that have some clue of how to do this. I've got other trades that have been around for 15 days and have no idea. They've never read about an ABCD. They don't understand what the symmetry is. So they're still learning. The question becomes, well, why did you choose this swing high? Why not that one? And then when you went to this low, why didn't you come back to this high? Why did you choose this one instead of this one? So the purpose of developing indicators and strategies is very, very simple. First and foremost, we want to remove the discretion. So when we come in here and we work to remove the discretion from the trader, obviously that comes to the emotional aspect of it. And again, this goes back to when I was with uh, Tony Robbins, working with Robbins Research International. Pain, pleasure. We're doing everything to move towards pain or away from pain towards pleasure every single day. So we got to do something to remove the emotions, remove the fear. If I have fear that I'm going to miss the trade, then even thinking about that for a split second can cause me to miss a signal, especially when we're more active as day traders. So from a level one perspective, level one says we want to take a series of if-then thought processes, if-then rules, regardless of what they are. They could be as simple as if price close is greater than a 200 period SMA, then what would most of you do right here? Most of you would buy. My buddy produced a trading system that says if price closes above the 200 SMA, then sell. So we've got an if, and then we ask to look for a condition. We've got a then, the other side of the statement. We take this particular action. So that's all a strategy is. We're lumping together a bunch of quantifiable thought processes. If this, then that. If this, then that. The more things that we put in there, the more difficult it becomes to produce that uh, particular strategy. Okay, so we look at the markets and we look at theory and logic, and then we look at practical application. We look at historical back-tested numbers. We look at historical drawdowns. We look at the size of the drawdown, the duration of the drawdown. We look at minimum capital requirements to trade that market, that trading strategy, whatever it is. Then when we go to the markets, remember, right here in the no-risk environment, 
I've got nothing at risk right now in the markets, no capital allocated. If I go back and watch these charts, I'm going to make decisions based on the rules of engagement. Okay? If not, and I'm trading real time, trading's 90% logic, 10% emotion until $1 of our own money is at risk. Then it flip-flops. So the goal uh, that I have is to have everybody find a way that they can remove the emotion from their trading, or at least be able to manage your emotions during the session, period, over and out. Void of managing those emotions, you are highly likely to continue to struggle or fail as a trader. So I say, let's go out and let's try to identify the best way to do that. So level one for me is very simple. Level one. is rules-based trading. And we'll look at that right here. This is where I create if-then thought processes. So for example, the other day, if the market drives into one of my DSR levels, and I've got an extreme reading, and I've got a double top, I combine three different technical indicators. Two of those are momentum-based, along with previous market structure where market traders, the people who drive these markets every single day, took action previously. And when all that comes together, I say there's a reasonable expectation, greater than 50% probability the market's going to sell off here before it goes higher. Based on that, A, we can sell crude oil. B, we can buy USO puts. Then we find a different way that we can present that theory, if you will, or take action on that theory in a way that produces a reasonable risk-reward ratio. I'm going to risk 18 ticks day trading crude oil to make 18 ticks. That's a one-to-one -one risk reward profile. If I hit my first target at plus 18 ticks, then one contract is out of the market, $180 gross in the bank, and I'm still short another contract. The multi-contract position sizing allows me to get rid of that post market. Oh, I should have stayed short. Oh, I wish I would have been. So the scalper comes off and it pays the fear, pays the greed, puts a little money in the pocket, lifts a little weight off the shoulders. The other contract remains short to pick up the bigger moves. And again, it's not a question of if those bigger moves are going to happen. It's when they do, will we participate? Okay, so then level two says, okay, let's take those rules base and now let's automate the entry. And as a lot of you know, this is what I did in the prop rooms. This removed the fear of entry. It removed the question marks that traders had in their minds. Oh, are all of my conditions met? Have all of my criteria been met? Are all of my rules in play? Should I take this trade? And again, if you've had three losers in a row, that next trade feels dramatically different than the exact same trading signal and setup after three winners in a row. The difference between us and the algorithms, the algo trading, the quants, is the new computer I just bought has no feelings. It has no emotions. It doesn't have a mortgage to pay. It doesn't have a wife that asks, where did that money go? It doesn't have a kid in school. We have emotions. So the key is, A, I've got to have a strategy that has a positive expectancy, and then, B, i got to follow those rules. So we always ask, well, why didn't you follow the rules? Well, it's always going to be one answer. It comes right down to emotions. Pain or pleasure, period, over and out. Well, I didn't think it would, or I thought it would. Oh, yeah, yeah. So how do we alleviate those completely or at least manage those? Level 2 automation automates the entry. It automates the ISL, the initial stop loss. We can automate the target 1. And then the trader continues to develop the skill of trading to become a professional by managing the balance. So, as mentioned before, the goal here was to put together strategies that, one, with enough consistency, let's say it's 70% accurate or 45% accurate, but maybe the first target is two times greater than the protective stop. Either way, my job was to basically get that first contract to produce break-even performance over 50 or 100 trades, and then 
let the trader manage the balance for better returns. So let's take a look right here at some of this stuff. Okay, so we'll leave this right here. We talked about the if-then thought process. This right here is discretionary. So if I ask you to come in and identify swing highs and lows in this particular chart, you're going to come back here. Some of you are going to take this swing low to that swing high, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. That's based on your training. It's based on who you are right now as a trader. It's based on your personal preferences. Some of you prefer more volatile markets. You want more directional movement. You want more action. Some of you strongly dislike that. It literally upsets your stomach to think about doing 15 trades in a day. I had traders in prop rooms in Chicago and in Dallas that would trade 100 times a day. 100 trades a day, not 100 contracts. 100 trades a day, 1,000 shares per trade big time volume. I had some other guys that would analyze a market for nine hours and put 100 shares out. Different preferences, okay? But again, to remove the discretion, if I come in here and identify this as a swing and this is a swing, to remove the discretion, we can apply technical indicators. That allows all of us to arrive at the same thought process. So let's come in here, right click in the chart, left click indicators. And then I'm going to go grab the T2U internal strength indicator right here. Okay, internal strength I'm going to set to 513, 30, minus 30, and then 233. Now, the uh, let's take this guy right here. We'll make this a slightly different color. So you can see it at the bottom of the chart. And this is purely theory and logic. Again, theory and logic versus practical application. So let's make this silver, left click apply. All right, so there's the internal strength indicator at the bottom of the chart. Now, internal strength judges or looks at just that. We're measuring the internal strength. Obviously, as the market is rallying, internal strength is rallying with it, right here. As the market is declining, internal strength drops below its zero line, a signal line. Similar to a MACD, most indicators can be plotted as histograms, and then it declines down here. So we talked a little bit about tendencies. So I started looking at this guy and I said, okay, Let's talk tendencies. Let's look at potential turning points. All right. Now, I wanted to identify potential turning points. So the question that I consistently was asking is, what if? What if? Or what does? What does the market look like? What does this indicator look like? And for me, again, I prefer to trade turning points. I don't, it's not that I dislike momentum trades. I grew up as a counter trend divergence trader. That's what I taught all the time in Chicago. That's what I've taught for 15 years, basically. Now, I've dealt with momentum systems. I've dealt with directional position traders and so on. So what I try to do is I say, okay, what tends to happen at turning points in markets? Okay, so I'm looking for turning points. I typically look at relative strength. So as I look at relative strength, I've been using that forever, love the indicator. Let's come in here and let's find a way that we can now identify specifics with this internal strength indicator. So I'm going to come down here and grab constant lines, this guy right here. We're going to go 55 for one value, we're going to go 30 for another. Here we'll go minus 30 for this value and we'll go minus 55 for the final. This guy's going to be a little difficult to see, so let's change this color. Okay, now let's come back in. We want to put it on the exact same area that the internal strength indicator is on. That's in panel two. 
I'll take constant lines. Let's put it in panel two as well. So now I can gain some perspective. Right here, we had a beautiful swing low and a turning point in the market. What was the indicator doing? It was at minus 55. Right here, we had a significant turning point. What was the indicator doing? At plus 55. So then I started to wonder, what if every time this guy hits plus 55, I sell it? What if every time this thing hits minus 55, I buy it? So my initial theory is based purely on that information. Okay, so we can start off right here. This is your first thought process. This is exactly like if RSI set to 5 hits 94 overbought or 6 oversold, then I sell the next bar market. So here we're going to say if IS is greater than 50, then what if I sold the next bar market? If internal strength is less than minus 55, then buy next bar market. Now, if you know how to program C Sharp, C++, you could probably write this in about two hours. This would be without any targets. So the first thing I do is I come in here, I grab the ruler, and I say, okay, right there's the first bar where at the close of the candle we closed above 55. So I would sell the open of the next bar. The first thing I do is I go to the highest high if I'm short, and I see that the market went 63 ticks in my face. So it moved against me 63 ticks. Before, take the B point right there, it moved for me right here 278 ticks. So if I sold it right here with a 100 tick stop, I would have made 200 ticks or two times my risk. Okay, cool. I like it. Great trade, great signal. Now, what I used to do back in the day is I'd test two or three more and then dive into writing code and spend hours putting this thing together. Or, better yet, I'd take it to the market and start to trade the thing. Not considering what were the market conditions at the time this signal took place, not considering any filtration, nothing. All right, so we said that the other side of the trade was going to be once we hit a minus 55, then we could buy next bar market. So it was the close of this candle that confirmed a closing bar below minus 55. So we would buy the next bar at market. So I buy the open of the next bar. I immediately pull down here and see it moved 63 ticks against me. I also know that if I was short right here, I can't be long and short in the same account. So from my short entry here, when I got my buy signal, this actually would have been a stop and reverse entry. So I stop out of my short and based on this new signal at the bottom of the chart, I buy, I reverse to a long entry. So let's say again, we used a hundred tick stop. It worked up here. That's a thousand bucks per contract in crude oil. So I risk 1000. Let's see if we made 1000. So from here, this initial pop right there was 215 ticks. You see it right here in the box, $2.15. So again, if I risked 100 to make 200, by the time the market rallied to here, I had hit my profit target. Now at this point, if I decide to exit the entire position, then I don't participate in this move. If I've traded two contracts, I can take one off here, let the balance run. All right, so now we talked about, here we go to plus 48. Is plus 48 the plus 55 we looked for? No. Every one of you in this room has to say no right there. So what does that mean? We've just removed the discretion. There is no discretion there. It either did or did not hit this upper line, and here everybody has to answer no. So again, if you're trading in a discretionary way, but you bring rules to it, and then you're honest about the rules and follow them, you can get as close as you can to mechanizing your trading signal. And remember, everything about a trading system, there are three primary areas. Number one, 
what sets up the trade and then signals the entry. Number two, where's your initial stop loss? When you know your analysis is wrong. And then number three, what is your exit strategy? You, some of you call it take profit. And again, there are different ways that we can take profit. We can take profit using a static profit target. We can take profit using a dynamic profit target. We can take profit using a trail stop. A trail stop is dynamic as well because it's typically based on market principles, whether it be a swing point in the market, an indicator based on market directional move, volatility, okay? Or we can take profit when we get an opposing signal. Here we were short, here we got a buy signal, so we stopped out of our short and reversed to long. Those three components have to be present. And again, if they're not, my submission to you is you don't have a strategy. You don't have a signal. More importantly, if you say, okay, I like that. I like my target. I like, and then you look at six different ways that you exit a trade, and you change the way you exit a trade based on how you feel at the time, then again, you're moving away from that consistency, away from what you may have tested in real time, and you're still introducing discretion. Well, you know, this time I used this exit because. Now again, if you tell me because and then you follow that statement with something that I can quantify. I exited here, Todd, because RSI 5 was greater than 90 and I got a turning point signal. That's quantifiable. And my rule, gang, is always, if I call my programmer up, could he write that for me in a piece of code? If yes, then it's quantifiable. If he can't, he would go, what? What are you talking about? So when you hear yourself make statements like, you know, in a really strong market, I like to, okay? If the market's selling off hard, then I. What does selling off hard mean? What does it look like, right? If I get a volume spike, okay, well, what is that volume spike, okay? Do you stop at a red octagon with four white letters on it when you're driving your car or anything that looks close to it? You've got to get that quantified. So again, ask yourself, A, could I teach this signal to somebody? If my 10-year-old son or daughter walked in and I said, okay, look, if these gray lines get above this horizontal line, then I want you to click that S button. Until these gray lines get below this bottom red line, then I want to click the buy button. Anything other than, you know, if this thing looks really good, if this thing looks strong. Yesterday, talking to a new client, six times in about uh, three minutes, he said he used verbiage like, I like to see this, I enjoy that trade, and so on. Again, all emotions, emotion, emotions. So I buried. What do you like about it? What does the, what is the, uh, this particular indicator look like when you like a trade, and so on? Then we can drill down and quantify some of that thought process. Anything other than that, discretion. All right, so let's say right here, something that's very common and typical is we say, if our target one is hit, then we move our stops to break even. Why do we say that? Well, A, I've read it a lot. I've seen it in a bunch of PDFs that I've downloaded from all these sites on the internet. I've done a lot of free trainings, and I've heard everybody say that, so it must be true. Have you ever tested it? Okay. What if moving the stop to break even after target one getting hit actually causes the balance of the position to lose money. What if instead of moving it to break even, you left it at your initial stop loss until another criteria was met? So again, gang, you got to test that stuff. All right, so now let's take a look right here. Let's take this guy, the B point, let's move it to the highest high right here, and we can see that we had 555 ticks was the maximum favorable excursion. But wait a minute, before we got there, we had a sell signal. So let's pull it back down. So it was right here where our short entry was met. There was the first time we went back above. And now you start to see some of the tendencies. So we would have covered our long. Here we took a profit target that was two times our protective stop. That was 200 ticks. Taking the 200 ticks felt fantastic right here. It felt really good right here. I feel like a rock star. Even if I move my stop to break even, 
not stopped out. Right here, I'm wishing I would have stayed. Then I might try to jump back in here because I feel bad, get rewarded here. Or I could just say, you know what? Again, if we go less than 55, then buy. Place a protective stop and stay long until we go greater than 55 and sell. That would be an always in the market SAR type of strategy. Is it profitable? I have no idea. Okay, so right here we go back above. Now our rule for entering the cell has been met. So we'd sell them here. Take the ruler. We sell the open of the next bar. I've got to wait for the close. So far to here, we had 158 tick move against us. So now we see our 100 tick stop would have been stopped out. But had we been able to stay in the position, you see that as we rolled over, right there, we got a buy signal. That was 134 ticks. So I'd look at this and go, okay, well, maybe I need a 200 tick stop. So then I would just throw the 200 tick in there. And then come down here, did we hit minus 55? We certainly did. I said if we hit minus 55, we buy the next bar market. So I buy them here. The market pops right here. How far did it go? It went 100 ticks in my favor. Then it rolled over, and now I'm on new structure lows. Ah, I kind of want to be short. So through this process is where I start to come up with 100 worked on two trades. It didn't work on this one. Then I see here, if I bought the next bar market, I had 100 ticks in my favor. And then I start to arrive at questions like, maybe we say if I'm long and we see 95 ticks in profit, then trail the stop to break even. Then I would have been stopped out right here, break even. Aha, beautiful. I feel like I fixed this one trade. Well, Todd, what impact did it have on this trade? What impact would it have had on this trade? What impact would it have had on this trade? And we don't go and look at historical data and look at the detrimental impact it may have had. Okay, so now I wanted to remove this discretion. You'll see that the internal strength acts like relative strength, MACD, and we can also see divergence. As price goes to a new high here and a slightly higher high here, we have lower highs in the internal strength. Thus, we are showing bearish divergence. It can be used that way as well. All right, so now let's go to the next level. So I said, you know what? I don't want to have to see this, and I want to be alerted any time my criteria have been met. So we go to the next level. That's the IS over. And the IS over simply takes the internal strength indicator, and it says if these conditions are met, then I want to get an audible alert. So there's the IS over. We're using the same settings that we used. I'll go to the 55 here. In fact, I'll go 54 so that when we hit 55, it's above. We'll go minus 54 here. Notice that there's a sound alert right here. Left click OK. Now, every time those criteria have been met, let's get rid of this, get rid of this. It's going to identify the turning points for me. And in some of the beginning lessons, we talked about the if-then thought process. We also talked about what do I see on the chart. We talked about the stimulus that traders use. You and I rely on what we see on the chart. We then process that information. What does it mean? And then what do I do based on that meaning? So I give you an audible tone. I give you a visual alert. And then we started to align further. Now this is so much easier. Now I could literally delete this indicator. I don't need to know what's going on behind it. I can't get in my head and go, yeah, but I've got divergence and try to bring subjectivity. Now I've removed any subjectivity, and now it's just pure facts. If this and this happened, then I want to see this on the chart. So the turning point signals just that. I tell the indicator, if we hit plus 55 for one bar or more, then I want you to start to monitor these bars. And I want to be alerted the first time we make a lower high right here. So internal strength rallies when there's strength behind the move based on the values built into this indicator. Relative strength would be rallying right here. A MACD would be rallying right here. Okay. 
Then we finally peaked. Right there was the highest high in the rally. And then here's the first lower high that we had in the sequence. That's where I told my programmer, put a TP up there, turning point. Now I get an audible alert. I get that guy pop up on the chart and it looks just like that in real time. Aha. So I know what's going on with my technical indicators. Not only that, but I have an expectation about what might happen next. That's the key. The expectation is this could be a turning point in the market. Well, let's use some basic rational thought. If the market's been going up and it's a turning point, the only other way the market goes is down or sideways. So a turning point with a red counter trend tells me A, price is greater than a 233 period EMA, B, I know my internal strength has hit greater than 55, which is a very rare occurrence. C, now my mind says, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I see a turning point, I hear the audible alert, and now my mind says, look for a qualified sell signal. Now in developing a trading strategy, this might be my setup. Okay, so the setup says, if IS over generates a turning point signal, then what do I do? Okay, now this is critical. Number one, I can sell next bar market. Number two, I can then look for a black tip signal. And then when I look at this gang, the question becomes, how many bars between the TP and black tip? Okay, so when I started to look at this, now the cool part about doing some of this code is I can go in, I can say, okay, show me what I call a cluster two signal. So here's the level two cluster two. So this is saying if internal strength hits this, and in this case it's minus 30, then give me a turning point. If I get a turning point, then look for the black tip. And if both of those conditions are met in two consecutive candles, it can't be three bars, it can't be four bars. It can only be on the same candle or in back-to-back -back candles. When they cluster together, then I want you to give me an audible alert, show me here, and then I can use this to actually place a trade. It can put me into the position. And if I get into the position, it can place a catastrophic stop, it can place profit targets using the automated trade management and any ATM that I've previously built. So let's pull this back down. What does the black tip represent? This is when the raw portion of the internal strength, which would be the raw uh, moving average as an example, right? Open, high, low, close, divided by three. This right here is when this indicator crosses below a moving average of itself. Okay, and that's when you get the black tip right there. So then I started to recognize that when these two things occurred back to back, turning point followed immediately by a black tip, this tended to be a really nice sell signal. Now again, if I sell the next bar market, what would we do? Now I'm in a back test mode right now. Right now I'm showing you exactly what I do to develop strategies. This is exactly what I encourage you to do with anything that you're currently doing. I don't care if you're trading 20 period RSI, an 8 period EMA. Uh, if the 8's above the 20 and you get a close above the 8, then you buy the next bar market and you stay long until you get a close below the 3. I don't care if it's that simple. Whatever it is, you have to do this. And again, gang, very honestly, 15 years experience. If you're not, expect to continue to struggle as a trader. So the first thing I do is I say my default deal is always A, sell next bar market. Boom. Okay, love it. Now, where am I short from? Grab your ruler right here. The best case is I sell the open of the next bar. I know I can tell my strategy to do that. Okay, looks good. Slightly lower low. My internal strength right here is declining quickly. Love it. Oop, there's a slightly higher high. 
Ah, we're going to go make a double top. No big deal, Todd. Don't worry about it. Then what I do is I take my horizontal line right here, and I drop this in at where my protective stop would be. So we've talked about 100 ticks. If we're short from 176, my stop would be 101.76. And of course, I made that light, so we'll color that there and set default. Boom. So there's my stop. Now, if I also say I'm going to risk 100 to make 200, and I'm short from 176, then I need to come down here. Beautiful, target hit. Or I can say trail the stops. Trail the stops based on what? I can add my fib dots. Then the fib dots have multiple variables or parameters that can be modified and changed. Okay? So there was an entry, there was sell next bar market, and this turned into a beautiful trade. I can literally go tick by tick. Here's a turning point, but it wasn't followed immediately by a black tip. In fact, two, three bars later, four, five, six bars go by until we get our black tip. I wonder what happens there. I've still met a real extreme reading right here that tends to call at least short-term swing highs and swing lows. Let's see if it's relevant. Aha. So if I waited for the black tip, then bought next bar market, let's go grab our ruler. Right here, I would have entered at around 98.52. The market did move against me. Right here. 42 ticks, no big deal. Then the market moved in my direction. 217. So here, if I risked 100 to make 200, I just had another winner. Now, what's different? The difference here is from turning point, two, three, four, five, six bars later, we got the black tip. So this is not a cluster two trade. Thus, if I told the strategy, look only for cluster twos, it would have ignored this trade. Well, now I see a potential weakness in my signal. So now I have to say, OK, allow for six bars between the turning point and the black tip. OK? But again, gang, I want to go back and I want to see what impact does it have on the overall signal. All right, so let's continue to move this forward. And let's tighten the bars down. So now we're asking, are we identifying turning points? And we're looking for other information. So here is a black tip. I can see from the internal strength indicator at the bottom of the chart, we went greater than 55. Here's another occurrence that I recognized. Here we go plus 55. And on one candle, we get the first lower high. And it also is a crossover. So when we get a black tip by itself out here in no man's land, that means that both criteria were met on one bar. And typically, this is where we get a violent move in the opposing direction. And these can become these V tops and V bottoms. OK? Yeah, it's a perfect example. So then I came back in, and I just started doing something really simple. All right, let's just go in here, and let's just identify. There's the black tip. And I had my clients do the same thing and just go in and start to identify turning points, black tips, when they occurred within a five-bar cluster. And then I said, when we get them in a five-bar cluster, in other words, from the time the turning point signals, that's bar one, two, three, four, five, there's the fifth bar. I want you to act as if, act as if, act as if you sold the next bars open and then used a volatility stop versus a volatility target. So how do we do that? Volatility simple. Base indicator in every trading package. Come in here. Go grab your average true range. I use a seven period ATR. We'll put that on. It's at the bottom of the chart. Read the value of the ATR. So I want to know the value of the ATR at the time the signal occurred. I come right here and say show data box. I go show data box right here. The black tip occurred right there. OK. 
Okay, let's move this over. Come on. There we go. So there's the turning point. That's bar one, bar two, three, four. So the fourth bar had the black tip. Was that five bars or less? Yes, it was. On the black tip, the average true range was 56 ticks. Okay? So I round up. That becomes 60 times 2 is 120. So I sell the next bar at 178. I would put a 120 tick stop in versus a 120 tick target and see which one got hit first. Okay? And then I started to see, man, this thing actually works. If I did nothing more than just literally did a 2 ATR stop versus a 2 ATR target when my criteria were met, it looks like I got a winner here. So let's take a look. If my risk is two times the ATR 7, that's the 7 period ATR, and my reward is two times ATR 7, I've produced a risk profile or a risk reward ratio that is one to one. One unit of risk to one unit of reward. So if we take a look at our expectancy formula, we say if we win 60% winners times, and let's just use 100 ticks as an example so we can keep it simple. So 0.60, 60% winners times 100 ticks means 60 ticks. If we're winning 60%, that means we're losing 40%. So we take our 40% loss. Our losses are the same size. So this is 40 bucks. We take our wins at 60 minus our losses at 40, and we arrive at a 20 tick or a $200 expectancy per trade then what we do is we take that out and we put as much money through that expectancy as we can until that expectancy breaks down. So over the course of 50 trades, I'd expect 10,000 bucks, 100 trades, $20,000 gross. So times 100 events. Okay. So if the signal has a positive expectancy, then the real deal is, am I going to follow the trades? Now, obviously, as I did this, I then started to see, well, look at this. There was my black tip. If I sold him here, then, boom, there's 380 ticks. What was the average true range when that signal occurred? The signal bar, again, the signal bar is defined as the bar where the final signal took place. In this case, it's the black tip. That had a 75 tick ATR. So two times that would be risk 150 ticks to make 150. So here, if I took 150, I missed another potential 230. So then I ask, what could I do to pick up more of that maximum favorable excursion? And that's where the fib dots came in. Then we take a look here. There's a turning point. Now here, let's expand the chart so you get a better visual. So here's my turning point. So now I start my count. Turning point bar one, two, three. On the fourth bar, I get a black tip. Is four less than five? Yes, it is. If yes, then buy next bar market. So if I used a cluster five signal, which means that the turning point and black tip have to occur inside of five bars, then I buy the next bar market right here. I buy the open of the candle. The highest high from the open was 100 ticks. Okay, The ATR was 85 ticks on my signal bar. So I'm looking for a 170 tick target. If the market goes 100 ticks in my favor, I did not hit my target one. And if I stayed long with no trail stops, as the market rolled over here, right here is where I hit my 170 tick stop. So I'd have to record that as a loss. But looking at the trade saying, okay, A, I didn't get a back-to-back -back signal. So this would not have qualified as a cluster two. B, I did get a 100 tick move in my favor, which is one times the ATR. The market moved one ATR for me before it moved against me. So what would that modification of the rule set look like? 
then I can come in here and I can say okay. If market move one ATR in favor, again that's higher if I'm a buyer and long, lower if I'm a seller and short, then. See the if-then proposition. Again, every time, gang. If this, then this. It's a conditional statement. If the market moves one ATR in my favor while I'm long or short, then stop trails one ATR. I could say stop trails to break even. We could say stop trails to break even plus 10. So these are variables that I can now test. I've got my entry criteria down pat. There's my signal. We identify the signal based on visual tendencies of one technical indicator. We then identified the entry. We buy next bar market. We haven't even looked at the variables that we could use on the entry. We then looked at my initial stop loss. We used a volatility measurement. We used a static number, a seven bar ATR. We used a static number, two times the value of that ATR, but because average true range is a dynamic indicator, this is going to move and adjust with price. We saw a couple of really nice winners. We saw the strength of the signal. And now we're seeing a potential weakness. So now we're saying, how can we address that potential weakness? The weakness is the market gave us a one ATR move, no problem. So we're pretty good at catching at least short term swing lows and swing highs in the market. Okay? But maybe we want to trail the stop. Now again, let's look back at previous signals. If I would have trailed my stop here, it would have had no impact because this was what I called the no pain train. From the entry, we go straight south and we're short. We jump on the sell train and no pain. Straight to profit targets, beautiful trade. Would it have affected any of our prior signals? What about this guy? Okay, once it moves one ATR in our favor, would we have been stopped out? Well, from the entry right here at 182, it moved against us about 130 ticks. The ATR on the signal was 60. So again, 120 right here, close to a uh, stop out. All right, now let's take this chart, let's tighten it down, and let's look left. Now we've got our basic information down. We've looked at theory and logic. Here you see in a declining market, we go well below this. Look at this, minus 78. Pretty significant sell-off right here. My turning point comes in, one, two, three bars later, I get my buy signal. If I buy them here, I get stopped out. Ugh. Market continues to go lower. I get a turning point, and then six bars later, I get a black tip. This, we almost buy the lows of the session. So what was the difference in this and this? So now we can further assess, and we can take a look at, okay, what was different about this trade? In fact, this one looks like it might have been even better because this thing went to minus 83, and it rarely goes to minus 83. I wonder why it didn't turn. Was this a news event or whatever? Well, we say, what if we modified our entry? And instead of buy next bar market, we take the signal candle, which is the candle where the black tip occurs. We take the high or low, and then we add or subtract X number of ticks. And we place a buy stop there. Or a sell stop there if we're getting short. The second thing is we could wait for a close above or below the signal bar. So what that would be doing is providing additional confirmation of a potential move in our favor. So let's spread the chart out. There was my black tip buy signal right there. The high of this bar
92.85. The high of the very next bar, 92.90. This bar went five ticks above the high of the signal bar. So if I said, hey, take the high of the signal bar as defined by the black tip by the high plus 15 ticks, we never would have gotten long right here. So my entry filter kept us out of this trade. Beautiful. So now I just solved one issue right here. I solved the issue of getting long while the market was still in decline. What impact did it have on other trades? If we said buy 15 ticks above the high here, the high of this bar, 9076. 9076 plus 15 is 91. Right there, we went to 9091. So we'd be long from right here. We get a pullback right here. Our two ATR stop holds and gone pecan. All right, so we just took a look at an issue. We now have modified our entry by filtering out trades with a simple, instead of just buy next bar market, we are a counter trend trader trying to buy in a big sell off. And that affected this in a positive way. We just kept ourselves out of about a 200 tick loss. Now, we're going to get in a little bit later, 15 ticks later on every single signal. So number one, I know that has an impact. Number two, if we buy the next bar at market, market orders rarely get any slippage. When we enter the market in a thinner market like a crude or a gold or so on, we might get slipped. I place a buy stop. When that order is touched in the marketplace, it becomes a market order. So if my buy stop is resting above this guy and the market's screaming through this, I'm likely to get slipped one, two, three, four ticks on entry. So those are other considerations. So as you can see, gang, developing a trading strategy, we can invest a ton of time, but I go through the same logical thought process every single time. Hey, we got a great setup. We've got a great signal, but we might need to modify our stop. We got a great setup, a great signal, but we might need to modify or filter our entry. Instead of buy next bar market, I can take a close above, and that's what I'm doing in that RSI trade. Okay? So now to take it from level one, which is right here, which is where we have rules around the system itself, but it's still up to you and I to follow those rules. And if you and I are looking at these rules and we're looking at that market right there, we got to be honest. We got to say, oh, it's hard to buy the falling knife right here. Don't step in front of a train. And all of the stuff, especially if I'm 0 and 2 on my two prior signals, the last two long entries I've had, the market went in my face. And we use all that negative internal dialogue that we use. Oh, man, it went through my numbers like a warm knife through butter whatever it might be, I might talk myself out of that signal. I might say, you know what? I'm just not going to do this. There's no way this market's going to pop from here. You know, we just had uh, an issue over in the so-and-so arena or this area or whatever because of the fundamentals. Or I just follow the rules. Okay? Now, what's the other thing that we noted here? We can say if our internal strength hits minus 55, take the trade. Or we might say we'll go minus 55, but if we go to minus 80 or below, then no signal. The minus 55 says high probability extreme. The minus 79 or 80 says massive directional momentum behind the move. Okay? Okay, so let's tighten it down. Here is plus 55, there's plus 80. So if we took our turning point black tip sell, market moves against us. So from the long entries right here, 95.90, the market moves against us, 97.33. So 150 ticks. It pulls back and then right there, we get our black tip buy with trend. So you can see this is a counter trend sell. The CT pops up for me automatically. 
That just tells me that price is greater than the 233 moving average when I got the signal. So maybe on the counter trend, denoted by the CT there, A, no trades. I only want to trade with the trend, Todd. Okay, great. Then you would be a buyer right here. So we're in a bull continuation pattern. Price is greater than a 233 EMA. My internal strength dropped while we're in a bullish mode. We had a significant pullback. We went to minus 55, and then on one candle, we saw a higher low and we saw the crossover or the black tip. So let's buy the next bar market. ATR on this candle right here is uh, 52. We buy the open of the next bar, and right there you see 336 ticks in our favor. Okay. So let's see how much farther that went. Aha. 336 was the maximum favorable excursion. So introduction to the different filters. The level 2 now takes it, and it, again, it automates it. We can automate it in several different ways. Number one, I can automate it to say, hey, give me an additional alert right here and put me in the trade. So there's the four-hour chart in uh, recent crude oil. Okay, Cluster 2 signal. I'm looking for a turning point followed immediately by a black tip. But this one is set to the default settings. Okay, The default settings here are plus and minus 30. So if we come over here, we take our indicator, and instead of doing the uh, 513 overbought, oversold on the IS over, here we set it to 55. We're looking for a really extreme reading right there. So let's pull this down now to 30. Let's pull this down to a minus 30. So we're looking for a less extreme move, which means we're going to get more frequency, more trading signals. Left click OK. Now look at all the trades. We're going to get more false signals, but we're also going to get in, get in earlier on the good trades. So for example, Here's a turning point black tip buy with trend right here. Great trade. Here's a turning point black tip counter trend trade right here. Note that the market's moving sideways when we get that signal. Great trade. Okay. Yeah, now all we're doing is we're looking for the internal strength to drop below 30, which is this line. And right there, turning point followed immediately by black tip. There's a two bar cluster. Okay, so we can modify the settings on the indicator to increase the frequency of the trades. Exactly. Then we go to the cluster 3 right here. Again, if alerted to the cluster 3, now I say I want to see the turning point, and the black tip can occur on the next bar or one bar later. We could go a cluster 4, two bars later. Cluster 5 and so on. So we can loosen these as well. And then the final level is I can attach that to a signal like we've done right here and that signal can have an exit on it as well. So here it is right here. This is based on some of the Donchian breakout theory. And you can see that not only is it generating the vertical lines like on the previous chart, but also we can put it into a strategy format, have us put us in the trade. Now, this is the powerful part right here. So take a look. Right here is where our condition for a long entry was met. Okay, so from the long entry, I come in with the ruler. Now, this has its own set of exit rules. It puts me in the position. So from the entry right here, the market went here, 56 S&P points, then it pulled all the way back down to here. Then it went here to about 60 S&P points before it finally did a stop and reverse right there. So if I get a buy signal here, A, I can buy the futures contract. B, I can buy an SPY call. C, I can buy a two lot. I can take a two ATR target on one and then let the balance run based on the exit and the strategy. So when we look at this, we can come in now and 
We've got a very simple exit strategy. And the question again is, does that produce any profits? So on 67 trades, it did 15,500 bucks gross. 67 trades, we got to take out about $1,200. So let's say around 14,000. You see that made all of its money on the buy side, buys to the buy side. Okay. The key though is if the strategy out of the box makes money, then it's highly likely that during the each entry, we've had huge opportunities for multiple contracts. So for example, here's a great one. Here is the short entry. Okay, so right here on this particular deal, uh, let me scroll this down. Ah, I don't have the ATR. ATR was about 23 points or 22 points right here, okay? So we sell the next bar market. So there's my signal, the big racing stripe. Here's the entry. And from the entry to the lowest low in the move before the market rallied, and there was the stop loss, we had a 53-point move. So did we move to ATR? Yes, we did. Okay? So that's the benefit of taking the level one to the level two, automating the entry, finding the criteria and the conditions, and then moving ourselves to a position where we can remove the fear that's typically surrounding entry signals. Can we do it intraday? Absolutely. We could do it on a 150 tick chart, a three-minute bar, a Renko chart, anything that we want to do. The key thing here, gang, is that we wanted to walk through the if-then thought process, take a look at criteria being met, the conditional thought process, finding tendencies in the market. These were indicator-based tendencies. The other thing we look at is what? Price-based tendencies, right? Let's scroll this back over. So for example, we've already talked previously about double tops and double bottoms. Right here is a great example. Market declining. Look at the internal strength. Okay, so right here. And then we put in a symmetrical double bottom with bullish divergence on internal strength. So this is one of the trades that we look at intraday. And then we just look to add DSR levels. So take your thought process, whatever that thought process might be, put it into an if-then statement. Take a look at this right here. Let's go out and we'll take a look at a uh, higher time frame. And let me go grab... Yeah, this guy's been kind of in a trend. We'll go continuous contract there. We'll take it out to a, a daily chart and then just identify the swings. Okay. So all I'm looking to do is, A, am I identifying with any degree of consistency significant highs and lows? So if I'm a trend trader... Here's a turning point buy with no black tip following it. Here's a black tip buy right here. Okay. So if I waited for a black tip buy, then bought the open of the next bar. Long from 1770 S&P, straight north. There's a turning point black tip sell against previous structure resistance. Okay. So right there. I love this trade. So if we take the black tip and we look left and say, hey, here's previous structure resistance, there's a turning point followed by the black tip. Number one, look at the number of bars between the two. That's telling me that the strength in the market remains up here. Okay, so probably less likely we're going to see the rollover. If we sell the next bar market, we get short up here and we're stopped out. If we wait for a sell below the lows of that bar like we discussed earlier, sell the lows minus four points, we never got short. Okay. So again, grab the level two that's available for you here. When you sign up for that $38 trial, I'm going to give you the opportunity to not only test this, but I'm going to give you five training sessions 
I'm going to teach you exactly how to develop a strategy. So my Strategy Lab series comes with that. I'm going to give you the indicators, walk you through the use of those. I really hope that this has been an impactful session for you, and I look forward to working with you either in the live trading room or via the video videos and our updates. We'll see you on the other side.